Hi everyone, I'm Jo Barclay Logie. If we haven't met yet, pleasure to meet you. Where have you been? Right, today we are looking at making a really simple bracelet. Simple and elegant. Sometimes less is more, and in this case it is the truth. I made a bracelet to match the earrings that I'm wearing today. So there's a video for the earrings, and there is now going to be a video for the bracelet. So it's really simple, but it's really sweet. Layer it up with other bracelets or bangles and it will look truly, truly stunning. So here it is. If I bring it a bit closer for you to see, there we go. Using very few materials and so it's quite quick to do. We're going to bezel around those eight millimeter beads and that just gives it a more luxurious feel. A quick look at what we're going to use to make this. We use exactly the same in the earrings, excepting I've added in a little crystal in the earrings. All A list of all the materials will go in the description so you can access what colors I've used and that sort of thing. So we've got a size 11 seed bead, and this is the Duracoat Galvanized Champagne. We've got a size eight seed bead, and this is a matte finish in the champagne color. Then we've got eight millimeter beads. Now, you could use pearls, you could use gemstones, you could use glass beads, but eight millimeters round is the size you want. And these pearls are called salmon rose. They're such a pretty color for the spring summer. And then we have got these fire polish beads. They are four mil in size. Again, you can use four mil gemstones, you can use four mil bicones, but the size of the bead is what makes the difference in the design. So four mil fire polish, and this color is called chalk white mint luster. I've got a clasp. So in this case, I used a toggle clasp. I'm using a needle and I'm using a size 10 beading needle and I am using six pound fire line in crystal, so the white color. And that's all there is to it. Let's get started. So what we're looking to do first is to bezel a whole load of our eight millimeter pearls. So if I hold it on its side there, you can see we've just used flat herringbone. So it's a double row of our size 11 seed beads to bezel our pearls. So we've got about half a meter of thread on the needle. And we're gonna start with ladder stitch. So we're gonna pick up four of our size 11 seed beads. We're gonna drop those down towards the end of our thread. You need to leave a little tail that you can weave away. So we're going to pass our needle up through beads one and two. So three and four will form a column alongside. There we go. And we're just gonna reinforce that by passing the needle directly down through beads three and four and then back up again through one and two so that our working thread is at the opposite end to our tail thread. I've just flipped it over on my finger because I bead, when I'm doing flat herringbone, I bead right to left. So let's get that focused a bit better. We're gonna flat herringbone, we're always going to pick up two beads. Whoops. And hopefully not have them drop off your needle. Good start, Joe. great start. Pick up two beads and we're gonna pass down through one bead on the left. And those two beads will sit above the previous row. You take your thread straight across the intersection of two rows and you pass up through two seed beads on the right. And that thread that came across disappears in between those rows there. So let's do that again. Pick up two of our size 11 seed beads. Thread is exiting the column of beads on the right. We're gonna pass down through one bead on the left. Thread straight across and pass up through two beads on the right hand side. And so you're going to continue with your flat herringbone strip, beaded strip, 
pick up two, pass down through one, come straight across and pass up through two. Each time pulling your thread tight so that there's no thread visible there. So at the moment I've got one, two, three, four, five rows and I need a total of 20 rows to get around my eight mil pearl or gemstone, whichever you are bezeling around. I've got to my 20 rows of flat herringbone. Count twice because your eyes can start to play tricks on you when you see beads in such close proximity to each other. So just be careful counting your rows. It's 20 in total that you want. And now I'm ready to add on my eight mil bead, whether it be the pearl or the gemstone. And I'm gonna let that drop down to my herringbone strip. And I'm going to bring that herringbone around my pearl over the top of my working thread. And I'm just gonna hold it in place. My working thread comes round the outside and I'm now going to come back through the pearl. And you want that thread around the outside to go straight through an intersection of rows so that it disappears into the beads like that. So that's trapped the other side of our herringbone. Now we need to join the two ends together. So I'm just going to pass up through a couple of beads. No rules as to how many you come up, but you're gonna go straight across. Each time you change direction, you want that thread to disappear in the intersection between two rows. So if you go up two beads, you come down through two beads. If you go up four beads, you come down through four beads. Now I'm going to bring the other side around and Sorry, let's just do that. Bring the other side around and I'm now going to come down through a couple of beads across that join. Pull your thread in and close it up. And I'm going to now turn and go the other way. And I want to go across the join again because it's not completely closed yet. So that's just on the one side pulling my thread in tight and now I'm going to go up on the other side. So there you have it. I'm now going to weave this working thread away. So I'm just going to come up through a few more of my beads, change direction. So you want to go straight across and down a couple, no rules, just where your needle feels comfortable going through. As long as you are taking that thread straight across, it doesn't matter how many beads you're moving up and down. So I'm just going to change direction once more. There we go. And now I can zap off. Where's my zapper? There it is. Zap off that working thread. Um, but before I'm done, I need to thread my needle onto the tail thread, this little bit that's left, and weave it away in exactly the same way. And you're going to need a few of these so you can get going bezeling your pearls. Time to start putting it together using some of the other beads that was in our materials uh, as the glue to put it all together, to put this simple bracelet together. So I've now popped a fresh piece of thread about a meter and a half onto my needle and I'm using an arbitrary bead from my stash as a stopper bead so this bead is nothing to do with my design and I'm just going to move it down towards the end of my thread I'm going to leave myself about 10 centimeters I may use this to add on one end of my clasp or I may just be weaving it away depending on how we go so to make it a stopper bead you're going to just pass the needle back through the bead from the base to the top. That way, when you get to the end of your design, it's really easy to just slide it off with your fingers and then you can continue with what you've got to do. So, there we go, stop a bead on. 
Right, now we're going to put things together. So I am going to start with a size 8 seed bead. Then I'm going to go for one of these lovely mint green 4 mil fire polish and another size 8 seed bead. Then we're going to go through one of our pearls and we're going to have this combination on the other side of the pearls. Now our pearls are already bezeled, so what you need to do is find where the holes are and you're going to go straight through in the middle of your herringbone, straight through the pearl and straight out the other side, coming out in the middle in that little ditch that is between the two rows of beads. There we go. And now we're going to repeat the eight, the fire polish, and the eight. And this is how you're going to build your bracelet up. So again, I am going to be looking for where the hole on my pearl is. I'm going to pop the needle straight through the center of the herringbone, through the pearl, and out through the center of the herringbone on the other side. So you're going to continue adding the fire polish and the pearls until you have a bracelet length that is required. Now I normally bead my bracelets to about seven inches. That includes the clasp. So my beaded section from this finger to the end is going to be approximately six inches because I will add about an inch when I put on the clasp at the end. Just to hop on and show you, I've used seven of my eight mil beads that have been bezeled and that is enough. That takes me to about six inches. And as I said, I know adding on my clasp, clasp is going to add in another inch. So I am going to stop at seven of my bezeled pearls. And as I'm at one end, I'm now going to add in the loop of my toggle clasp. And I'm going to use my size 11 seed beads for this. Again, no rules here. This is just how I like to do it. It gives it quite a neat finish. So I have picked up two, I don't want three, two of my size 11 seed beads. Let those drop down to the eights and I'm going to pass through the loop of my toggle clasp and back through the 11 that is closest to the toggle. When I pull the threads in, we've got that. And I've still got one 11 before I get back to the eight. So I'm going to pick up one 11 and then I'm going to pass through the eight and through the fire polish. And I'm going to pull my threads in tight and you'll see that that's a lovely little neat attachment onto the clasp on that end and I'll attach the bar in exactly the same way on the other end. At this stage I'm just going to end off my thread. So I'm going to do a double half hitch knot. I'm going to come underneath the thread bridge that has formed between the fire polish and the size 8 seed bead. Pull my needle through to form a loop with my thread and then I'm going to take my needle through that loop and pull tight. That is a half hitch. To make it a double, you need to do it a second time. So again, under the thread bridge, form a loop with your thread, pass the needle through your loop, and pull the thread tight. Now I will always pass through some beads because if I snip my thread off now, there's a chance I'm going to splice through that knot and undo my hard work. So I'm coming through the eight and I'm actually going to try and get back through the pearl and out the other side. 
and that way I'm pulling the knot into a bigger bead and when I snip off my thread where I am now there's no chance of me going through any knots that I've tied. So there we go. Now I'm going to slide off the stopper bead on the other side. Just slide it off in my fingers. I'm going to pop a needle onto this side and then add on the other part. And there you have a really simple but beautiful looking and quite expensive looking. I always feel that this bezel around your eight mil bead, around your focal beads, just adds a bit of panache to your design. And it's gorgeous to wear on the on the wrist. It really is so, so pretty. Now, if you've enjoyed that and you've worked out how easy it is, even if you're a newbie to beading, look out for the video where I do some matching earrings. So using exactly the same beads, but I've just added a little bit of decoration to the underneath with those lovely mint color fire polish. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Give me a thumbs up, ask me questions. I will always get back to answering you. If you don't want to miss out on any more contact, content, contact, <laughs> I'm not going to contact you, I promise. If you don't want to miss out on any more content, just hit that subscribe button. And the next time you log on to your social media, you'll get a little notification saying that there is some new demos for you to look at. Thanks for your time. Bye.